Kia ora team and welcome to our seventh video on Achievement Standard 91328 where <clears throat> we are going to be looking at levers uh, briefly. Learning outcome for today is to understand and explain how levers work in the human body. So let's get started. Levers are simple machines that transmit force. Levers help to move large loads with a set amount of force and can help move loads more quickly than they would be moved without the lever. There are also three classes of lever that we're going to have a look at. Before we do that, let's look at the parts of a lever. So this image here is a simple lever. Now the fulcrum is the pivot point of the lever. The effort is where the force is applied to move the lever and the load. The load is the object that has been moved. The effort arm is the distance between the fulcrum and the effort being applied. And finally, the resistance arm is the distance between the fulcrum and the load. So those are the parts of the lever. Let's move on to a first class lever. So a first class lever is where the fulcrum is between the effort applied and the resistance, which is shown in that diagram there. A real world example of a first class lever in action is a seesaw. You can clearly see how the fulcrum lies between the effort and the load. In the human body, the pivot joint in the neck acts as a fulcrum with the muscle providing the effort and the skull providing the load. So this is a first class lever within the human body. Let's take a look at a second class lever. So a second class lever, the resistance is between the effort and the fulcrum, again shown in the diagram. So a, a real world example of a second class lever in action is a wheelbarrow. You can clearly see the resistance or the load lies between the fulcrum and the effort. So the load is the dirt there. In the human body, performing a calf raise is a second class lever. Your toes act as the fulcrum with the weight of your leg as the load. The effort is your calf muscle acting to overcome the load. Third class lever. In a third class lever, the effort is between the fulcrum and the resistance. You can see that in the diagram. A real world example of a third class lever in action is a baseball bat. You can clearly see the effort is exerted between the fulcrum and the resistance or the load. In the human body, a bicep curl acts as a third class lever with the elbow as the fulcrum, the load in your hand is, is the dumbbell, and the muscle providing the effort or your bicep. So the effort is between the fulcrum and the resistance. Levers and the body. Most levers inside the human body are third class levers. An example of this is the elbow joint. The force produced by the muscle is applied through the tendon at the insertion point, which is attached to the bone across the joint. Levers can be manipulated to either increase the speed of an object or to lift heavy objects. You do this by adjusting the length of either the effort arm or the resistance arm of a lever. A lever designed for speed will have a short effort arm and a long resistance arm. Now the picture at the bottom there, the golfer, that's an example of a lever designed for speed. Okay, there's a short effort arm but a very long resistance arm which allows the lever to generate a lot of speed. A lever designed for lifting heavy objects will have a short resistance arm and a long effort arm. So you can see there um, the resistance arm between the fulcrum and the load is very, very short. And this provides um, a longer effort arm allowing uh, the builder or that, that workman there to uh, apply more force through the lever onto the rock. So that's a very uh, brief look at levers in the body. Um, please get your whisk sheet done and we will do some tasks around this um, in our next daily lesson. Thank you.